Okay, Royals for lesson 7.8 on the intersection of two lines. There's a couple of things I want to do. Um, first, I just want to quickly review uh, in two space the possible um, intersections that we have with two lines. So we could in two space, if we have different slopes, have um, one point of intersection. Uh, intersection. Right. Um, if we're talking vectors here, I suppose we would find that their direction vectors are not scalar multiples of each other. Um, so d1 is not equal to k times d2. Okay. If k, uh, if d1 is a scalar multiple of d2, we need to be careful because here we have two parallel direction vectors. That does not mean that we have parallel lines depending on which definition of parallel you subscribe to. Um, I subscribe to the definition that parallel means equidistant and that um, distant means non-zero distance. So here's line one, here's line two right here. Um, I would say in this case, and some point zero on line one is not an element of line two, then I have no intersection. I suppose if I ask you for the types of intersection, all I would consider no intersection to be a type of intersection. I would like you to mention that possible arrangement as well. Um, the other possibility here is that some point on line one is an element of line two. And sometimes students say, I think we covered this in the printed lesson, that, oh, that's just the same line. Well, maybe we'll start to see, especially when dealing with vector equations, how you might just have two vector equations that happen to generate the same number of points. They could be two different lines. They just exist in the same spot. So here I have some known point on line one is an element of line two. Then I have a line of intersection. Okay. In R3, you really just need to throw in a third condition. Um, this is, uh, you. No, now we, we would just have to specify right here. There's another situation in this case in R3. And it's very, I find it very difficult to sketch in R3. Here's a line right there. And here's another line that's going like behind it. So they're not parallel lines, but they still don't intersect. Let's try it in 3D. Here's one line. Actually, let's just have it be on the surface of the page. And here's the other line. It's not on the surface of the page. And those lines are never going to meet. So in R3, you could have a point of intersection. You could have parallel lines in a number of different ways. You could have coincident lines, or you could have skew lines. So I suppose if you can see that your direction vectors are not scalar multiples of each other, if you try to solve the system and you find a solution, then you know that there is a point of intersection. If you try to solve the system and there's no solution, it's because you're dealing with skew lines. If you notice that the direction vectors are scalar multiples of each other and you can find a solution, you'll probably find a totality in your equation, an equation that's always true. Um, but maybe you just see one solution. Well, then you know that there's a line of solutions. This is a little bit harder to prove just visually. You would have to show that there's a contradiction um, telling you that there is no solution. The second thing that I want to do is maybe just quickly go through, um, and I'll, I'll go through a pre-printed example here. Example number four, what if we accidentally use the same parameters? So from example number four, I had where, um, let's see, here's the one line and here's the other line. So I'm just going to use the exact same parametric equations that I did on the printed lesson here. So uh, x plus one equals t, giving me x equals negative one plus t. y minus three over four equals t. I rearrange, you get y equals three plus four t. And uh, z minus six, it will equal, or sorry, divided by five would equal t. So that means that z is going to be six plus five t. But then what I'm going to do accidentally is use the same parameter for line two. So I'll have x minus four divided by uh, one equals t. 17 minus y divided by two is equal to t and z minus 30 divided by five is equal to t. And I'll rearrange and I'll get these three parametric equations. This usually causes a problem when students don't 
try to solve actually all three equations. If I set my x coordinates or components equal to each other, then I get, in, in this case, it's kind of a, a special case. This isn't always going to happen. But when I set my x coordinates or components equal to each other, I find that there's an infinite number of solutions. Does that mean that I have a line of solutions? I don't know. Um, I set my uh, z values or z components or z coordinates equal to each other. And again, I find that this equation has an infinite number of solutions. So if I'm maybe pressed for time, I could see myself saying, well, I've checked for two coordinates. And that tells me there's an infinite number of solutions. Uh, I set my y coordinates or my y components, um, depending on how I see this, equal to each other. And I find that t equals 7 thirds. And I've, I could see students saying, well, then I suppose that t equals 7 thirds is the value that will make all, both the, or all three of the x, y, and z values the same, since 7 thirds would make the x values the same and 7 thirds would make the y values the same. Um, and you haven't found the point of intersection here. By making these parameters equal, you're including a solution that shouldn't exist. You're assuming that there is already some sort of equality between these parameters. Just think about this in terms of generating two lines. Okay. I'm using scalar multiples of this direction vector to generate those points. I'm using scalar multiples of this direction vector to generate those points. Those scalar multiples do not need to be the same. Okay, I can keep this um, t value constant at zero, and I can change this s value without changing that t value. So it is very important to use different parameters. This is an error. Right here was my mistake which is why it's stressed in the new printed lesson how important it is to use different parameters for different lines. Okay, give that a shot.